the skulls like King Fathead, they have like, they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. They might break or have, you know, imperfections in them. And I feel like they, they look real strong and sturdy, but they're fragile because of the ceramics. And it's kind of like at times I've been broken in life and had to put myself back together. And I think other people identify with that. So then the, the crowns are kind of like to be regal and royal, you know, for us to walk upright. But sometimes the crowns are cracked. So it's like, yeah, but once again, nobody's perfect. What's up, Indy? It's Ray Steele. Before we get to my great chat with artist Gary G from here in Indy, please smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to leave a comment. Now let's talk to Gary and be sure to watch to the end to find out where you can see him in person. Thanks for watching. Cool artist and the reason he's here is one particular work that we're gonna talk about and you'll see maybe something similar and, and, he's, and he's done work like this before and maybe you've seen his stuff uh, already around town. He's got an exhibit coming up at Hillside on October 21st. That's when it opens, or that's when it opens. That's when the opening reception is. Gary G, he's uh, been around here for a bit, and it's great to finally have him in the studio. Gary, how you doing today? Hey, man, I'm pretty good. Thanks for having me here, Ray. The, the reason I wanted to have you in was a, a piece that I saw at the Butter 2 Art Fair fairly recently. It was a skull with a crown, a king's crown on it, and a cigar coming out of its mouth. And it made me think of our political insider, Abdul Hakim Shabazz, just throwing that out there. And I even, I took a picture of it and I sent it to him. I was like, Abdul, what you doing here? Or something like that. Uh, but we were talking before we rolled here, that was kind of an accidental piece, if yeah, you will. Yeah, it was, um, so I was, I, I'm, I'm, I'm avid cigar smoker. Okay. I'm at the show. But uh, smoking a cigar with some friends and I'm walking into my studio Studio is a non-smoking building, so mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I put the cigar out. Yeah. And I had dug King Fathead out of storage, like I hadn't showed it in a while. And I just stuck it in his mouth. Took a picture on Instagram, and everybody was like, man, that's cool, you should keep it, you should keep it. <laughs> and I showed it to Brady, and she was like, I'm gonna agree with the people this time. So we put it in butter, and it was kind of like, one of those, the underground hits. So like, I know the adults really love that one. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of cool. Did that sell at Butter? It did sell. That's awesome, man. Because yeah. I know I know Butter sold a lot of art uh, for a lot of black artists this year. Man, it, it was like a phenomenal experience this year. Mm -hmm. So I was in Butter One um, last year and it was a great feeling. Um, and it was a pop-up, you know, 30 days. But they planned it out and just the way and the flow and the feel of the city, like you can just, feel like the energy that's going on right now. Yeah, I mean, it was huge this year, you know, taking up all that space at the studs, and uh, yeah, the vibe was great. Now, are, are skulls a thing with you? Do you, you do skulls a lot? So I do do a lot of the skulls yeah. um, and a little small head. So um, one of my professors, when I went to Heron, Corey Jefferson kind of did skulls, but I had these independent studies and I was doing brick walls. And then uh, kind of like out of respect and the homage for him, I was like, I'm gonna try my own skull more or less and see how it works so uh i did and it, it kind of worked out cool and i've kind of evolved over the time so what's weird is sometimes the skulls like king fathead they have like they're not perfect mm -hmm. they might break or have you know imperfections in them and i feel like they they look real strong and sturdy but they're fragile because of the ceramics and it's kind of like at times i've been broken in life and had to put myself back together and i think other people identify with that so then the, the crowns are kind of like to be regal and royal, you know, for us to walk upright. But sometimes the crowns are cracked. So it's like, yeah, but once again, nobody's perfect, you know. So it's uh, kind of just like the inner, and we all have a, we all have a skull, mm -hmm. and it protects our brain, which is our strongest muscle. It's not our biggest, but it's our strongest muscle. Um, and it's the power of the imagination, so. I kind of just look at the skulls like that, like just the thoughts and the imaginations that run through our mind. I guess when you think about it, there's really no such thing as a perfect piece of art. Uh, maybe that depends on the artist, but I mean, you probably look at something and you might be satisfied with it one day and then you might find something the next day to say, oh, well, I'm try to add this or take away that. And yeah. uh, I mean, there, there's really no set definition of, of a perfect piece of art. That is true. Yeah. Kind of like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Uh, you know, my grandmother used to say that all the time. Yeah. All that good stuff that we like, what does that mean? <laughs> you catch on now. Uh, and kind of like, 
even talking to people like what makes artists somebody made it mm -hmm. like it can be therapeutic um, or it can be informative or just entertaining um, so I don't know I guess for me I just like to try to see like to work because you know right yeah. you was like you took the picture you sent it to a king so people would do stuff like that and it's like it's cool like just starting a conversation or um, just to even people laugh or like man that's crazy so it's kind of fun you know um, running with like a childhood dream and bringing it into reality all right now for people who don't know Gary G you've been doing this for how long now Ooh, so I'm a lifelong a I'm a lifelong artist. Yeah. Um, unprofessionally, I've been drawing since I was like maybe four or five years old mm -hmm. on just about anything in the house. Professionally, paid me like a decade, um, and then real serious within like the past five years. Yeah, so yeah, I'm around a lot. So I work with a. Arts for Learning, and then also with the Art Center, I'm with their Art Reach, and they did an insider art program. So I get to work with a lot of the kids in the community, um, and then sometimes some of the elders in the community, like just working with different arts organizations or galleries. So for me, it's like, you know, just like a blessing to just be able to connect with people culturally or emotionally, um, or sometimes just normally, like, hey, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So. It's fun, like, you know, that that artwork or my artwork can, like, do that, inspire or inform people. So it's just a great feeling for me. What, what do you think you had to say to the people through your art? Or what did you want to convey? What kind of message when you decided, hey, this, this is what I'm going to do? Um, it's kind of crazy because the message can vary. Um, sometimes they can have a, a light political nature to them or be informative. But other times it's just like, I just like to create content more or less or like to just to get people to conversate. So, you know, it's cause it's like, these are my thoughts. So if I just, I have to think about it and then I put it out there. So it makes you kind of vulnerable, but so you see how people receive it. So, and everybody doesn't always like your stuff. So if you're an artist or aspire to be anything creative, you gotta know that everything is not for everybody mm -hmm. and don't take it personal but it's like part of the process of self-discovery. So for me, I think it's just like, I actually put and pour myself into the pieces. So when people feel them, then I feel like we connect some kind of way, you know, whether it's physically, emotionally, or spiritually, like we all see something in these pieces, but they may be something different. Um, sometimes in my work, other people see things that I don't see or I didn't even know what's there myself and then I'm like I never you know I never thought about it like that mm -hmm. so it's like so once again it's just cool just to see how people respond to something that you do that's a, that's a good point I mean that's true of any endeavor not everybody is going to hit that like button on your Instagram or Facebook for every single thing you put out there and you but you can't live your life or do what you do expecting people to do that all the time right yeah. you just kind of just have to like you have to love what you do yeah or at least have a passion for it and know that in order to find any success we're gonna fail or you have to experiment and you know that's the only way we're gonna get anywhere in life um, and you never know how good you are at anything if you don't apply yourself or try mm -hmm. um, I know at times in life I didn't even see myself like I always knew that this is something I wanted to do but you know, naturally in a city that wasn't cultivated like for art or art careers, like historically, mm -hmm. or we don't have the big market like some of the bigger cities. No, you, you're not gonna be able to do that. You gotta get a real job. You get, so it's like, well, it's found a way that it is a job. You yeah. Know? So it's yeah, especially now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not all, it's not all the glamour and grits of the showing, but sometimes it's working with the kids or working with teachers and. You know, so you're learning as well, and it's just, like I said, it's part of the process, and you never know how you're going to be used in life, like, to influence or inspire somebody else, so we all just have to make, I guess, movement towards our goals, so you might not necessarily say, well, I've made it, I've made it, mm -hmm. but you've made it a lot farther than where you were. Yeah. So I just kind of try to look at life like that and equate art the same way. 
Groundbreaking Breaking Ground is the exhibit that's coming up. This is at Hillside. Now, what's special about Hillside? Tell me a little bit about that. So, what's special about it for me, I know, so the Indianapolis Art Center is kind of like starting satellite locations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, the Hillside is one of the satellite locations. And you know, it's predominantly been an underserved art area, black community historically. And um, Mark Williams had approached me and said he had a project in mind and he was like, Gary, you're the guy to do it. I need you to do it. And we talked about it for maybe about a year while the process is going on and I didn't even know everything or like what's in store behind it, but I'm the first artist to show in this space. So it's a new space, new neighborhood, and there's also like programming. So there'll be a program art aspect to it. So kind of like the art center on a smaller scale since it's a satellite, a satellite space. Um, so that's why we came with it. it's groundbreaking, breaking ground, breaking ground in a new space and it's groundbreaking combination, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of like an honor to be the first, you know, to open a, a whole new space and it's like they're behind you to do what you want to do. So as far as me, so the work aspect, you'll see like different variations and style of my work. So basically how I started on paper, um, but then the papers evolve because it's like mixed media. So there may be some airbrush or inks and acrylics and then some spray paint and pastel. So it's like, I kind of like to take non-traditional steps to show the work in traditional or non-traditional settings. So the combination and the marrying of the, the new space and to be able to have the opportunity to, to do this is kind of groundbreaking. Yeah, no kidding. So uh, the 21st of October is the opening reception in the open house for groundbreaking, breaking ground. Gary G, how long is the setup going to be there? The setup will be, so I know 21st, I know it's from like 5.30 to 8.30. Right, 30. right. And I believe the show runs for 30 days to at least six weeks or more. I have to, I have to check my Well, that's okay, but uh, as you said, but this is kicking off perhaps a new era of art in an area where it hasn't been before. It hasn't been, so yeah. it's, it's like, like I said, it's great to be the vessel to help yeah. usher in this change. All right, go see Gary G and go see his stuff. October 21st is the open house for groundbreaking, breaking ground at Hillside. We'll have the uh, info at WRTV.com. And maybe you'll meet Gary and hear his wonderful uh, Barry White-like voice at the <laughs> same time that uh, some of us are jealous of. Gary G, go see him, and uh, we will check this out. Get WRTV.com, all the info is there.